All right, folks, we are here in northern Japan in late fall. This is about the middle of November, and oh my gosh, is it gorgeous out here, all right? Uh, fall in uh, Japan is so completely different than fall in, uh, in Alaska. Alaska is beautiful. We just came from there. Uh, snow on the ground starting to freeze up uh, pipes and get cold, and we landed right in the middle of fall in Japan. I mean, if you've got to visit Japan, visit it in the fall. Oh, good Lord. One of the, one of the things that is absolutely most beautiful about uh, here in the fall in Japan is the persimmon. And uh, you see the tree behind me here. We are going to uh, pick some persimmon. We're going to show you how the, uh, the Japanese uh, treat it, how they process it and take care of it. Um, you might know the persimmon uh, from uh, as a Japanese persimmon. It's called a khaki. Um, but we're going we're gonna to take a look at this. It's absolutely amazing fall day here in northern Japan. Uh, if you know anything about this persimmon, or if you don't, I'll give you a quick uh, quick background. This is not the, the whole thing, but in Japanese, the persimmon is uh, known as the fruit of the gods. It was an uh, aristocrat gift um, that the Japanese would uh, pick, cultivate, and uh, process. And we'll go through how they process it here in a little bit. Um, but uh, they would uh, give them as gifts, and they're just absolutely incredible. You can eat it fresh off the tree if you have the right variety, um, or if you have uh, a different variety, uh, you have to treat it a little bit. Because uh, khaki, there's like over a thousand varieties of persimmon. Um, and uh, here in Japan and, and around the world now, uh, Swedish botanists helped propagate it around the world. Uh, but there's over a thousand varieties, but you can kind of break them up into two basic types. There's the amagaki. Uh, ama, of course, is the kanji for that is sweet. It's sweet gaki. You can eat it right off the tree. Uh, tastes kind of like, a, uh, I don't know, an apple. Tastes like a persimmon. Um, uh, or there is the shibugaki, which is the astringent, very astringent. If you eat it fresh without treating it, uh, the, the, there's, a, there's the persimmon taste, but overlaid on top of it is extremely strong astringency that just kind of sucks dry your mouth. Um, so you, you can't really eat it raw. So that's the shibugaki. Um, what we have here around this place are the shibugaki. So uh, uh, we're not going to be eating them straight off the tree because you just kind of can't. Um, but we're going to show you how we treat them. Um, and we, uh, we treat them th the way the Japanese uh, treat them, but uh, uh, obviously it's a little bit more modern, but uh, you know, it works for us. Uh, so we'll go ahead and go through that. Um, but the uh, yeah, it's just absolutely incredible up here. I'll show you some shots of uh, all the persimmon we have. Uh, I hope you I hope you enjoy this video. If you uh, are thinking about putting in a uh, a fruit tree into your backyard or something like that, very much consider a persimmon. They are extremely low maintenance. You'll see a couple shots uh, uh, here later where I took a video of a couple of our trees fully loaded before we've uh, uh, taken any out. Um, and you'll see that they, and that's with no maintenance. You don't, I mean, you prune them back a little bit, you know, make sure the birds don't get to them. Um, but other than that, they're really easy. But uh, yeah, uh, come with us a little bit. Um, we're putting up our winter supply of uh, shibugaki and uh, we're going to turn them into hoshigaki, uh, which is dried persimmon. And uh, that is just a, a treat beyond compare. Um, and if we do it right, uh, you'll get to see that. So uh, come along. All right, helping me today in the fall sun is my daughter Emberly. Emily, we call her Emberly for uh, when she's acting a little bit uh, fussy. There's an inside joke in there that uh, inside family joke that I'll uh, uh, leave you to ponder. But uh, her real name is Emily. Uh, but she is going to pick some uh, persimmon for us. Yeah, her name is Unicorn Papa. There you go, Emmy. Why don't you go ahead and go pick some persimmon? Yeah, come all the way down. Oh, there we go. Okay, hey, give me. Uh, I'll give it. Kyle, Tiger, come help. Okay, put it in the put it in the bucket. There we go. Go ahead, Emmy. What? No, that's you don't want to get on two sides of a ladder. One side is for climbing on. The other side is not. Emmy, just stay there and hand them to me. There we go. Now, like I said, these are the shibu gakis. Um, they aren't quite as acorn shaped as some of them. Tag it here, put it in the bucket. Um, okay, and uh, Emmy is pulling them straight off. Now, when you pull it straight off, you can't hang it. Uh, unless, of course, you like, you know, do some special stuff to it. So um, we're going to let her pick a few of those, but uh, we're not going to be hanging them because she took the stem off. And that's fine, you can do that. Um, I'll show you how to do that. Actually, you can uh, 
Uh, there's other ways to, to get rid of the astringency. Uh, some people will freeze them, others if you just let them stay for a, uh, uh, like in a dark place and age for a week or two. And that's what we're doing with these. The problem with these is when you do that, um, these can be a little bit susceptible to mold and fungus and if there's any bugs in it. So what you want to do is dip them in a, in a white alcohol. Uh, we use a shochu, which is a Japanese... Uh, oh, we'll try to get... You can get you a couple more there. Yeah. So pull it off. Pull it off. There you go. So it's a white alcohol. Uh, you can use vodka. But uh, any non-flavored alcohol, and that'll just kill. You can't get it. All right, come on down, and let's let Tyga go up there. Okay, we'll get you a little bit later, Emmy. We'll get you some others that are low. All right, Tyga, hold on. Yeah, you're going to. Now, Tyga. Now, Tyga's gonna actually cut them in a way that we can hang them properly. Okay, so Tyga, Tyga, stop. Here's your scissors. Here's your pair, your uh, your clippers. Okay, clip them up above there. Okay, and you gotta hold it so it doesn't fall. There you go. All right, so when you cut these, if you leave the stem, okay, and we'll show you that later in the video oh, here. Tyga, hold on. Okay. We'll, we'll move the ladder, don't worry. Okay, when you, uh, when you've, when you cut the, leave the stem, now you can use that to tie the string to, to hang them for drying. Okay, you do have to peel them, we'll show you that in a bit. Um, but when you cut them, if you're going to dry it, if you're going to hang it and dry it, t turn it into hoshigaki, uh, you want to leave the stem uh, to hang it from. Okay. Alright, you can stand up here, Taiga. Alright, get one more, get one more. Yeah, we'll get it. Okay, get one more. There you go. Okay. Now, interesting, uh, if you do have a persimmon tree, these leaves, you dry them and you can make them make tea out of it. They're extremely healthful. A lot of vitamin C, vitamin A, uh, a bunch of other vitamins in it. But the tea, you, uh, the leaves, you can make uh, tea out of. But uh, we might try that, but that's not what we're really doing today. All right. All right, you want to move it to the other place? All right. All right, Tyga is getting old enough that I'm letting him uh, use the shears a little bit with uh, supervision. Emily has to uh, pull them off because I'm not comfortable with her up on a ladder using a shears yet. Okay, there you go, perfect. See how he left the T. So if you if you read some of the literature about doing this, leaving the T stem. Okay, you want to do that. I'll trim these up later before we go. Emmy, go ahead, put those in the bucket. Good job, Tyga. All right, Emmy. Ah, Emmy here. Don't pull it off, Emmy, don't pull the stems off. All right, can you get this one? Here, cut that one for me. There you go. Don't pull the stems off, Emmy. Uh, yeah. I can reach those. Good job. Oh, there you go. Here. There we go. Emmy, just leave them together. Yeah. You don't need to pull them apart. All right, which one do you want now, Tyga? Mm, I can't reach anymore. You can't? Well, step up one more step. One more step. Tyga, you can step up one more step. Okay, I'll hold the ladder. Okay, I'll hold the ladder so it doesn't fall. There you go. Look at you. Okay, good job. Emmy, here. Good job, Tiger. There you go. Now, if you are a golfer or a boyer, if you like a bowyer, however you want to pronounce it, if you like a traditional bows and arrows, uh, persimmon wood makes tremendously good uh, golf clubs and uh, bows and, and arrows because it's super dense, super strong. And we'll get it. Can you get any more, Tyga? How about the one right above your head? Yeah, there you go. There we go. All right. There you go. I'm going to trim this first part.
All right, folks, we are going to show you how to trim a persimmon for uh, making it into a hoshigaki. That is a hanging, hang it up, you dry it for a couple months, and you get just a, a beautifully caramelized, dried persimmon, absolutely heaven, heaven on a string, okay? Uh, the, the, the peeling is not all that difficult, so uh, this won't take very long. We're going to show uh, Yuki how to do it real quick because she's never done it. Um, and she is going to use just a standard, ordinary potato peeler, okay? Uh, this is uh, the type that you, you hold here, and you can peel it like this, a little bit safer for kids. Uh, if you have the type that you use like a, just a regular potato peeler like you might uh, be familiar with, uh, that works too. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to use my handy-dandy pruning knife here. Now, when, again, I mentioned this earlier, but I do want to say that for hanging, for making hoshigaki, for hanging it and drying it, you're going to want the uh, the tea, okay? When you trim, when you when you pick the fruit, you need to leave the stem, okay? Here's another example. Leave the stem here uh, so you can have something to tie to, so to hang it from there. You'll see some people will say if you don't have the stem, you can... Uh, uh, use like a little, uh, a small little uh, uh, wood screw or something like that, and that's fine. Um, but uh, you can avoid having to do all that if, if when you cut it, just cut the stem so you leave this nice little T here. We'll show you how to tie that later. But right now, we're just peeling it. Okay, Yuki, let me show you real quick what you're going to do. Okay, and it, it really is, all you're doing is peeling a, uh, like peeling a potato. The nice thing about uh, doing this with a potato peeler is you don't peel it too deep generally speaking okay okay now you do have to be careful you don't shear the ends of your uh, uh, fingers off uh, but you're generally you're just peeling it like a potato okay you do want to leave the top here so there might be a little bit here on the top uh, but all the way down and uh, this one looks pretty good but there might be like this one might when we go to peel that uh, this might actually have some uh, bad spots uh, so you kind of want to dig those out and you won't know it till you take the peel off but if there's a, a black or brown spot you kind of cut that out and that's fine you're going to be hanging it up to dry um and then but other than that other than the top you can just peel the rest of it so we'll let you can get started on that i don't think i mentioned yet but uh, she speaks japanese so uh, uh, <laughs> they do that here in japan uh speak a little japanese now and again uh, now what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a knife um uh, now uh, the, the con, the bad part about using a knife is it's a little harder to, to, you know, you lose a little bit more as you peel it. The positive is these are fairly small, at least for my hand. So using a potato peeler, I really have to worry about the ends of, you know, shearing the ends of my fingers off. I don't have to worry about that with a knife. The other thing, it is quite a bit faster. Um, and all I do um, is, is I, I've done several hundred of these uh, by this point, and so I've got my own routine. So I just make a, a center slice all the way around, cut it all the way around, uh, and then make these kind of circular uh, cuts for the bottom side. Now one thing that you'll find, especially if you haven't done this yet, is your knife matters a lot. Um, this is a fairly narrow knife. I'm sorry for the scratch, and there's a few mosquitoes out here today. Uh, this is a fairly narrow handle. This is a little, just a little pruning knife, a little Sandvik pruning knife. I had it forever and a day. Um, and so holding this, after you've been working on a few hundred in an evening, your hand really starts to hurt. Okay, so, if, so uh, you know, but it's the knife that I have. If you use a carbon blade, I've got a beautiful knife that has a round handle. It's an open L. There you go. Okay, so she got it peeled. She beat me. I, she wasn't talking. I was. There you go. Um, but uh, there you go. All right, just go ahead and uh, set it over here, and we'll get started on another one. Okay, I've got a, a beautiful open L with a round handle, and I can hold it forever. But here's the problem with persimmons: they are super, super astringent. Okay, and that carbon blade. This is a this is a stainless steel blade, so it doesn't have uh, any problem. But the carbon blade. This is so astringent that you'll get this black stain going. Matter of fact, the uh, Persimmon has a, uh, they make a, a wood stain out of it. Um, actually, it'll stain leather too. Um, and it reacts with that carbon and turns it into kind of a black mess. Okay, so you can use it. It doesn't hurt you. Uh, but it doesn't look all that uh, appetizing. It's, it's not too bad. But uh, so I'm using a stainless knife, but the handle, uh, your handle start hurting after a couple hundred of these. So uh, uh, pick, 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 pick your knife correctly. Um, I've got a little bit bigger hand, so the shorter the blade, the better. Um, but there you go, you know, you just get them, get them cut. Okay. Uh, Yuki and I will go ahead and keep working on these. 
And then we'll show you the, after we get these done, we will move into the hanging them up and how to hang them up. And then there's the trick. And we haven't talked about the trick yet. So if you just hang these fruits up and just let them sit for a couple months, you're gonna get a dried fruit, but you're not gonna get a hoshigaki, okay? And uh, we'll pass that little trick on here shortly. Uh, it's not really a secret anymore. The internet has uh, revealed the secret of the fruit of the gods, um, but uh, we'll get to that later. Go ahead and keep working on that, Yuki. Okay. And we've got two baskets here to do tonight. We'll go ahead and get that done. Dun, 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 dun. Now here's a close-up of what Yuki's doing. And like I said, it's just peeling, it's like peeling a potato, peeling an apple. Uh, if you're peeling an apple for, uh, you know, apple pie or something. Okay. Using a potato peeler like this takes a little bit longer. Um, but you don't lose as much to the peel. So, depends on how much you have. If you have lots and lots and lots, go ahead and grab a knife. It'll just take you too long with one of these potato peelers. But this works. Okay, you don't have to cut those out, Yuki. Mm -hmm. Those, uh, the brown spots on these persimmons, they're not bad. Oh. You, can, you don't have to cut those off. Okay. If it's black or it's if it's super mushy or something, yeah, go ahead and cut it out. But the, you know, just a little brown, sp uh, brown spot like that, little cinnamony powder on it, that's just fine. There you go. <laughs> All right, folks, uh, we're getting to the uh, th to the tying end, and we are going to uh, show you how we hang these things up. Now, there's nothing complex about this. Uh, Yuki is going to show, uh, show you how we do it. Um, but really, all you're trying to do is you're hanging these uh, persimmons up in the air so that they can dry over the next couple months. There is no trick. Uh, all we're using is yarn. Yuki, show the yarn. Okay. Uh, you know, just normal, you know, crocheting, knitting yarn, uh, and we're tying the persimmons onto them. The only, only th there's only two things you really need to be concerned about. One is, is that they are far enough away from each other so that when they're hanging, they don't touch. Um, okay. Uh, and so, you know, you want to have, you know, about a hand width uh, between them. Go ahead and hang that up. Uh, uh, pick it up, Yuki, so you can see how it's going to hang. You know, okay, so there you go. It's not going to touch. And Yuki's going to tie a few of these on. Uh, the other trick, uh, and again, it's not a trick, but, uh, you know, so you want to make sure that these are far enough apart that they don't touch as they're hanging. The other thing is, is you really need to be a bit on the paranoid side about um, uh, mold, mildew, and, and, and germs and stuff. You know, this is fruit that's hanging. You don't need to be making hanging fruit wine. You're trying to get dried fruit. So what we've done and what uh, they recommend, you get a white alcohol, a white liquor. Uh, for here in Japan, this uh, Jinro, uh, it's a uh, shochu, super, super cheap. Um, you know, it's just a white alcohol. Yeah, you could probably drink it and, and, and not die, but it's not gonna be anything you're gonna enjoy drinking. It's just a white alcohol. Um, I'll probably mix it with a uh, orange juice and make a uh, screwdriver with a taste of Japan, I guess. Uh, anyway, it, it's just a white alcohol, you know, a cheap vodka, che you know, something like that. Um, and then we put the same stuff here in the spray bottle. And so when we're when we're, when Yuki does each one, uh, we're just going to give each persimmon a few spritzes. Okay, and that's all that's doing is killing the uh, anything that's on them, right? So this is uh, you know this is fifty proof, twenty five percent. Uh, same thing in this little spray bottle. Um, so when we're all, you know, as she gets each one done, she'll just give it a couple spritzes. Uh, you can go ahead and start tying. Um, so if you recall, you know, we, we've left the T on the, the T stem on each one of these uh, persimmons. Any of them that came off, we're treating in a different way. And uh, we'll show that in some other video. Um, but uh, so we're tying the yarn to that T. And that's uh, that's that's how we're doing it. And, and really, there again, there's nothing fancy about this tie. It's just a simple overhand knot um, that she's uh, tying on here. Uh, and we gonna call, keep going. 
Okay. Okay. Under around. Okay. Pull that through. Pull it all the way through. Okay. And now the end through the up and over and through that that hole there, just like you're making a uh, you know a shoe knot. Okay. Um, and whatever works for you, really. Okay. We hang. Uh, I think it's about eight to twelve, depending on. Uh, how long of a yarn you got so you know you, you you tie however many your situation okay tighten it up a bit oh it's wrong oh it's wrong you got it wrong all right let's see what you got there okay no i think you got it right just tighten it up no oh, no 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 yeah you got it wrong there all right there you go Okay, now tighten it up. There you go. All right, go ahead and put on the other one. Put on the next one. Yep, go ahead and uh, give it a spritz. Give it a spritz of your uh, uh, shochu, your white alcohol, your white liquor. I'll uh, give it two or three. You know, and definitely get the, you want to get the stem a little bit more because there's some nooks and crannies in there because it's not, uh, it's not uh, peeled. Okay, now go ahead and do the next one. There you go. Now, for the if you have some of these persimmon without uh, this uh, tea, or if you don't want to go through the ha uh, hassle of uh, hanging them up for a few months to make uh, dried persimmon, um, if you soak them in the same white liquor over here, the shochu or you know your vodka or grain alcohol that you you know got from your local liquor store, um, the alcohol will help the uh, persimmon. Uh, lose its astringency after a few days. So that is, a, that is an established way of uh, making the shibugakis uh, palatable. Okay, but we're just using it to, to just kind of take the surface mold and any germs that are on there. Go ahead and one more, Yuki. Uh, yeah, tie one more on there. Okay, and we're going to put on about, about 12 of these fruits because we're going to hang these outside. And I'll show you where we hang them out. But basically when you hang it out, um, you do want it to not be too warm. So if, uh, if your local area is getting uh, uh, still not getting all that cool in the evening, you don't want to hang it up or you'll just have rotten fruit, right? So a little bit cool, but it needs to have airflow. Uh, and the more sun, the better. And uh, we'll show you where we do that, uh, where we hang that up here uh, a little bit later. Okay, give it a, yep, there you go. All right, now go ahead and hang it up, Yuki. Or not hang it up, but uh, hold it up uh, like, you're, like it was hanging. See, and there you go. Okay, each one of the each one of the fruits is not touching the other, and that's all you're looking for. And we're going to keep going on that. We're going to get uh, eight to twelve uh, on that, and then we'll go ahead and get them hanging, and we'll be done except for the big trick. All right, Yuki, thank you very much for modeling this for us. Heavy. <laughs> <laughs> There's that word again. Is something wrong with the Earth's gravitational pull in the future? <laughs> All right, folks. We are to the hanging part of our making hoshigaki. Uh, we just uh, looked at how to string it up, and we have been stringing up our, uh, what, about 50 strands of these uh, uh, these persimmons, these hoshigakis, or these gakis that will become hoshigakis. Now, we're, uh, we've been hanging up as we go along, so some of them are further than others. If you look in here... Now this was uh, these were probably hung uh, maybe a week or two ago, and uh, this is what they start looking like. They start shriveling it up, uh, shriveling up a little bit. Um, I suppose on some level they don't look too appetizing unless you've tried what it ends up tasting like. In which case these just look like perfect heaven. Okay, uh, and there's really nothing fancy about this. You know, uh, I put in some uh, eye screws in the uh, overhang there. So I could hang them. The, the two things you need, same as drying any kind of fruit, is uh, sun, a uh, little uh, exposure to sunlight. It doesn't have to be 100%, but you want it to get some sunlight every day, uh, and uh, air circulation. So if you have those two things, uh, we did hang it underneath so that it wouldn't uh, get exposed to any rain. Okay, and there we go. Now, the trick to making hoshigaki instead of just dried persimmon. Okay, the trick is, is that as these dry every couple days, you want to come in here and massage it a little bit. Now we're not talking about, you know, getting super aggressive or anything like that. We're not talking, you know, some people say, you know, stroke it like that, whatever. 
Um, all we do is we push and massage a little bit, especially here at the beginning. Sorry for the background screams. Kids are playing on their bikes. But as you, uh, uh, we just push in a little bit. And what that does is it works the moisture out towards the surface. Okay, so it dries better. But what it does is it brings the sugars that are deep within the fruit up uh, to the surface. So it's kind of, you've got a very sweet surface. Now, if you don't have the time to do this, we've got 500 of these doggone things hanging here. Okay, and coming and massaging each one of these for uh, a couple minutes every day or every other day would just take up an enormous amount of time. So if you don't have time, uh, then you don't have to. I mean, dried persimmon tastes wonderful. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, but what I would suggest if you have a whole bunch of these is uh, pick a strand or two and come out and you know, you're just working it back and forth. You're just working that deeper, not dried center out towards the surface, okay? You'll be able to feel how rough you can get. Uh, these, you know, when they start getting looking like this, you have to, you can squeeze a little harder, but you also have to be a little bit more careful. Um, and you just, you know, you just massage it out a little bit. Okay, but this is all it is. It's really, I mean, it's a, it's a dried persimmon uh, with a little bit of massaging to get the deeper uh, fluids and sugars up towards the surface. Okay, and that's how you get that... Uh, uh, that hoshigaki instead of just a dried persimmon. Now, like I said, if you just hang it, just let it uh, uh, hang and dry, then you're going to get a, uh, uh, you know, like I said, dried persimmon. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, but to get that little extra bit of hoshigaki, uh, turn it in from just a dried persimmon to hoshigaki, just massage it out a little bit. Really not too difficult. Don't get too aggressive. You know, a minute or two for each one. You know, and all you're doing is just gently teasing the moisture out. But that's all it is. Now you stay on the inside of our uh, uh, house there. We just hung it on a on the curtain, okay, and then out here, just put in the eye hooks up there on the surface. And there we go. And we have, uh, like I said, we have about 500 of these strung about. And here in about a month or two, we will see how it turns out, and that will be next. All right, so we are ready to try our newly dried Hoshigakis. Um, these have been hanging here uh, for a uh, about a month. Uh, we get uh, this is south facing here, south facing, and so we'll, these things have been getting quite a bit of sun for this last uh, couple months, and uh, are about ready now. You see this kind of black skin that's redeveloped over this that's what you're looking for that's telling you that uh, it's uh, looking good uh, these uh, have gotten a lot smaller as you can tell uh, lost a lot of moisture we have massaged these every few days like you're supposed to and we are ready to give it a try I'm gonna drag a couple of my kids up here and we'll get let them try it and give us the uh, real reaction taste test okay uh, I will point out uh, the difference in these two. These, uh, uh, if you if you were paying attention earlier in the video or done your own research, there's two basic types of uh, persimmon. One is this kind of acorn shaped, and that's what it ends up looking. And this is the bigger amagaki, uh, a little bit sweeter. Okay, but it ends up, but they end up actually being not too different in size because uh, they lose so much moisture. So this is what you're looking for. This is what it looks like, and we are going to do a taste test here in a minute see if this turns out to be hoshigaki all right emmy go ahead and pick one and give it a try all right she's trying the little acorn shaped you like it yeah is it good yeah look at me so give me thumbs up Okay. All right. That's not the most excited uh, response. Uh, Taiga, go ahead and try one. He's picking one of the bigger ones. Can I eat? You can eat it. And show us the inside. I want to see the inside. Okay. Light's not all that great here. That's all right. What do you think, Taiga? Is it any good? Is it thumbs up? All right. All right I'm going to go ahead and try one. I'm going to try this uh, this little one. This is one of the acorn-shaped ones, and like I said, the uh, it's a little bit later in the winter here, so the light is a little bit weird. Okay, so it's uh, 
Try to get to show you show you the light here. Alright, let me give it a try here. Alright. Mmm. Oh, that is good. That is good. We probably could have massaged it a little bit more. There are not quite as many sugars uh, up at the surface, but doggone, that is good. Oh my goodness. Yep, go ahead. Mm. So there you go. And you just, like I said, I just cut it. I just cut it off the string like I was picking fruit. So you got the little string. Go ahead and eat it. Okay, so I just cut it off, and I'm just eating it straight off, and doggone. That is good. Let's see if I, I want to get a, see if I can get a picture inside. I don't know how that's going to work, but let me try. This is the bigger one. Let me give that a try. Oh, good Lord. That is good. Can I have mm. this one? No, hold on, Taya. All right, so our experiment with persimmon is awesome. This is good. All right. All right, here's that uh, the same finished uh, hoshigaki uh, with a little bit better light and in the sun. I'm going to take a bite, show you the insides. Again, you got that nice black crystallized sugar outer shell. Just absolutely delicious. Take a bite and get this kind of little bit softer, gooey center. That is doggone heaven. My goodness, that's good. If you've never had one of these, I highly, highly suggest you find some place that sells it, order it online, or better yet, grow your own. But, uh, of course, a new persimmon tree is going to take you seven, eight years before it's producing, but doggone, this is good. Folks, that is it for our persimmon video here. Uh, this is from uh, from tree to table. Uh, we we picked the tree, the persimmons off the tree. We uh, we peeled them, peeled the skin off, hung them up, and uh, dried them after dipping them in a bit of alcohol. All the astringency is gone. It's nothing but just this this sweet, chewy, you know, kind of dried persimmon with it with an outer shell, of, uh, you know, crystallized fruit sugar. Good Lord, that's a treat. Uh, our kids could take all 500 of these and eat them in a couple days, but yeah, you're going to want to space those out. I hope you enjoyed this video. We certainly enjoyed making it. This is becoming our uh, tradition every year. Uh, if you're looking to plant a fruit tree in your backyard, highly consider a persimmon tree. Uh, they produce just an amazing fruit. Uh, if you treat it right, uh, it'll become a, a family favorite uh, very quickly. Now, I did mention that it does take, uh, from, a, from a brand new persimmon tree, probably takes seven, eight years before you start getting uh, usable fruit out of it. So, you know, that's the downside to persimmon. But, uh, but if you have the time to invest, to put in some persimmon in the backyard, uh, good Lord, this stuff is absolutely delicious. Uh, Japanese uh, uh, hit, the, hit the nail on the head for uh, perfection when it comes to how to treat a persimmon and turn it into a hoshigaki. So, again, hope you enjoyed the video. Please like or subscribe to this channel if you want to see more. And I'll see you next time.